And the last we learned was the first part of the second parak of Sefer Malachim Aleph, where we talked about the uh, tzava, the last words of David Amelach to uh, to Shlomo uh, as he is uh, leaving the world. And I pointed out that there's a particular reason why it's framed as it is in Sefer Malachim Aleph. But if you look in Diver Hayamim, which runs as a parallel uh, source, even though it is written later, but it's also written up Yeruach HaKodesh, it gives us a window into much more of the national element uh, of the speeches and the private ethical conversation that David is having with Shlomo. And we still left as a bit of an outstanding question, which will not be solved completely today at all. Um, why isn't that just in Malachim Aleph? Like why leave it for Diver Hayamim? Um, and uh, let's say the working thesis, which I hope to fill out, is the same way that Sefer Tehillim is the sitter of David HaMelech, and it's giving you another perspective and his brain Adam Lamakum element. So to here and Sefer Malachim, the goal of the Sefer is to show the way in which the politics functions, but not just the politics, that's sort of the low road. The high road is how we get to the Binyan Beit HaMikdash, and what happens having to do with Hashra, Hashchina, the dwelling of the divine presence in the life, national life and the personal life of Klal Yisrael. All of that is unfolding here. And so this parak here, at least in Malachim, and we're up to the second part of it now, if you look with me, we're up to a Pasuk Yud Aleph, is really the end of David's life going into uh, Shlomo HaMelech's reign, but also the idea that he, even when he takes the throne, still needs to solidify, still needs to concretize his hold in order to be the one to be uh, building the, the Mikdash as his father uh, uh, was told to do, wanted to do, was then told to do, but yet not personally told to do, but that it would be within the family, et cetera. And, um, and therefore we, we hear this whole story starting in Parak Aleph about the, an embattled and maybe, um, uh, somewhat more uh, either infirm or inward, or um, you could even say quarantined, uh, withdrawn, David HaMelech, and that things are happening outside involving particularly Adoniyahu ben Chagit, who is his son as well, but not the son he wants to have uh, serve as the, uh, as the next king. But he arrogated to himself, Adoniyahu, that the trappings of power was making ready the inauguration party, and we saw how that played out. At the end of the interaction, uh, there is Adoniyahu at the end of Parak Aleph really telling uh, 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 Shlomo that he intends to be uh, entirely loyal to him, that he is actually holding on to one of the corners of the Mizbeach in Giv'on, and he wants the king to promise him that he will not put him to death. And Shlomo does not say, I promise you. Shlomo says, if you're loyal, then not one hair on your head will fall to the ground. But if you uh, do something wicked, then you will be killed. Uh, so he comes down from the Mizbeach, uh, he bows before the king, and Shlomo tells him, go home. That sets the stage for what happens now, Perak Bet, um, the new section that we're going to learn, where we find out that uh, Adoniyahu has maybe some other designs, some other thoughts. Before we get to those designs, that'll be the focus of today, Adoniyahu, Evyatar, Yoav, et cetera, the rest of the parak, just to look at the one, the two, summary psukim, Yud Aleph, Yud Bet, as a unit on their own, and to understand something about David al Yisrael, Arba'im Shana, he reigned a total of 40 years, Bechevron Malach, Shava Shanim, Rishalai Malach, Shloshim Veshalosh Shanim. He reigned in Yerushalayim for 33 years. Ushlomo yashava kisei David aviv, vatikon machuto me'od. Shlomo reigns on his father's throne, and it was firmly established. Firmly established, except for all of the ex uh, uh, exceptions that are coming up, all the threats which are uh, going to come up right about now. In the next, this is the parak where you're going to see them. But if you look with me at the screen, is to see uh, in the just one thing, two things really, two pieces from the world of uh, of, uh, of of David still, uh, something to think about in David's uh, world, is the following. Um, I want to make basically um, uh, two points that are picking up on themes that we focused on previously as threads throughout Sefer Shmuel Bet. 
The first of the Gemara and Sanhedrin, which we saw part of previously, but to see that Chazal were concerned with the chronology of where David reigned, for how long he reigned, and what it signified. And then the denouement of his life, the last thing that he asked for. So here we are, Amarav Yehud Amarav, Shisha Chodashim Nitzara David. For six months, the David have Tzara'at. V'nistalko heimenu shechina, u'pirshum heimenu Sanhedrin, and Sanhedrin was away from him. Six months did David spend as a Mitzora. It doesn't tell you when it happened, per se. It just says that it happened. And it's telling that we don't actually know, when you just look at this uh, at this Gemara, you don't know exactly what, what the catalyst is for why David HaMelech might be on the outs such that he actually has Tzara'at, right? It doesn't, it doesn't say. So we'll leave it a little bit open. You can, you can make up a reason on your own. But if you just look at the shot of the Gemara, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't say, right? And, and you should just bear that in mind that it hasn't, it hasn't given us uh, uh, the, the clarity to understand what the rationale for it might be. So just to think, but there was apparently this period, right? Um, whatever, whatever caused it. Uh, uh, as Tehillim states, Tehillim Nun Aleph, Tehillim 51, so um, uh, the pasuk here, uh, the, you know, um, sprinkle me with the with the hyssop bundle, and I will purify myself. Uh, launder me, wash me, and I will be uh, white as snow. I'll be more white than snow. The shchina, divine presence, was away from dichtiv. So. Um, uh, uh, the idea that the divine presence away from him, bringing back joy, the joy of your salvation and uh, the, the, uh, the, the generosity of spirit you should uh, uh, support me with, right? What are these two, these two psukim from? What chapter in Tehillim? I should have told you to look it up and I'll say it now. Look up Tehillim 51. Tehillim 51. Last time we're going to see it. We were here already several times. Tehillim 51. Just open till 51. It's in the Koran Tanakh that I'm using, page 751 of the Koran Hebrew English Tanakh. If you want to see it just in a regular Tanakh, other Tanakh, somewhere else, Tilim chapter 51. What two psukim from Tilim 51 that are related to him having Sarat. Lamatzeh Mizmullah David. Bevoilov Natana Navi, Kashir Ba El Batsheva. That's when he got the Tsarat. Chapter 51 is the chapter about David Hamelach contrite part of his tshuva process, not the sum total of it, but a representation of it in prayer, of how it's described in the way in which he describes himself as having um, uh, been born with a pure heart, the famous Lev Tahor, Barali, Elohim, Baruch, Nechom, Chalish, Bekirbi, please renew it within me. He knows he's far away, right? You have the Pasuk, uh, the, the Pasukim before the Pasuk Tet is the Pasuk I quoted, the first one. And then the, the second pasuk right after that, right? So I want to be the one who will teach people who are, are, are iniquitous and that those who sin shall return to you. Save me from blood, etc. My spirit. Beautiful psukim. They're all about a contrite. David HaMelech wants to get closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When? In the wake of that event. In the wake of what happened involving Bathsheba. And that's here the six months that David was on Itzdara. On account of, doesn't say when it happened, but on account of the, 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 the sin with Bathsheba. Uperish from the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin away from him. There's a passage from Kuf Yotet. Uh, 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 Echa. That's Kuf Yotet is the Chapter of Tehillim, it's eight verses per chapter, per um, letter of the Aleph Bet. So this is one of the Pesukim. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure I could fit that in chronologically as something per se, but it's, it's a Pasuk and the idea that the Sanhedrin was away from him. And then the Gemara goes in to try to understand how do we know that there are these six months? Shishach Shemina, how do we know there's a six month period? Because it says in our parak, was a total of 40 years. And then it says, Bechevron Malach. Sheva Shanim, that's seven. Yerushalayim Malach, uh, 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 excuse me, Yerushalayim Malach, and in Yerushalayim he reigned for 33 years. 
But when you look up the Pasuk in Shmuel Bet, it does not say that. In Shmuel Bet, it said, what does it say? Shem Hashim Shiva V'Shisha Chodashim. Right? It says seven years and six months. And it doesn't mention these six months. So in one place, to sum up, you're getting confused with the language. In one place, in Sefer Shmuel Bet, it makes clear that David was seven and a half years in Hebron. But then it says that he was 33 years in Yerushalayim, total of 40. So six months were lopped off. Where are they? No, the Gemara says they do matter, but he didn't reign for six months. Shema minan nitzdara. He was six months off the grid. Six months he had sarat, and for six months he was not. He was not, not. He didn't have anyone with him, right? So the question, of course, is: So when was this six months? When did it happen? And we want to volunteer. When do you think that there was a six-month period that he was away from Yerushalayim, was away from the Sanhedrin, had sarat, was down and out? And it's hinted at it's something that occurred that kept him away from being the, home. The Absalom rebellion. Exactly. Which means that the chronology goes like this. There was the event in chapter 11, of the last book. There was the, the rebuke in chapter 12. And from chapter 12, pretty much until the end of that Absalom episode, we have the reality of David losing, suffering, in pain, in torment, and then on the run. And after the event happens, remember, we saw in the, the Navi, it doesn't say that he went back five minutes later. He seems to be taking his time to get back to Shalom. Why? The Gemara says there was something else going on. The man was afflicted with Sarat. Not only that, but more than that, we have the reality of what he asks Hashem at the end. Amar Fanav, he said, Master of the Universe, Rebona Sha'olam, Macholi al oto avon, please forgive me for that sin. I mean, this is a great way to close the life of David Amalach, the greatest Balchuva, uh, the paradigm, the paradigmatic Balchuva. But at the end of his life, he's still saying to Hashem, please forgive me for that sin, that sin, because <clears throat> everybody knows what it is. I mean, again, I hope I've shown you over years now of learning that this preposterous idea that people drag David Malcolm Sheikh's name through the mud is uh, is just preposterous. It's preposterous to me that a Jew should do such a thing. A person who doesn't know anything about Torah, it's another thing. But that you should speak ill of David HaMelech, the way Chazal explained, the man at the last, last minute of his life still saying, no, 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 you know, please, I'm asking you, Hashem, give me a pass, you know, forgive me. Not give me a pass, but forgive me. The whole story of his life from the moment of that event had implications, ripple effects. So what happens? God says to them, I forgive you, right? It wasn't enough. Um, so what is I say imi ot letovav yiru sonai ve'evoshu ki ata shem ezer tanvidi chamtani? I'm asking Hashem, send them, send me a sign that I'm back in your good graces. Like let everybody know what is what is Hashem saying back to him? Uh, I, that that I can't do for you. Amar le bechayecha eni modia avoni modia bechaye shlomo bincha. I will not let it be known in the life of your of you your own life. You'll have to die under that cloud, but in the life of your son, you might even read it as um, the um, in the life of your son or through the life of your son, there will be a vindication. Now, I'm reading that homiletically. It's not what it says. It says in the Gemara, in your life, I won't, but in the life of your son, and what was that way going to be? Well, we haven't come to it yet because ultimately it will be the building of the Beit HaMikdash, the opening of the gates, the bringing of the Arn Kodesh inside it. But also, what is it? That who sits on the throne? Shlomo ben Batsheva. Full stop. If you open up chapter 86 in Tehillim, where that Pasuk appears, it's on page 769 in the Koran Tanakh. And uh, you could also find it in the uh, in any Tanakh, chapter 86 of Tehillim. This is another chapter of Tehillim. I hope one of the things that we try, I tried to accomplish do it through Shmuel Bet is to show you, look at this Tehillim, look at that Tehillim, look at this, look at that. So here's another one. You just look at this, this chapter, chapter 86, just the first, the first uh, 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 pasuk, first couple of pasukim. Tefila lo David hate Hashem oznecha aneni ki ani ve'evyon ani. I'm poor and I'm destitute. 
He didn't mean he didn't have any money. Understand? He feels so low. It's uh, you know, it's and and that's the pasuk where he's asking for a sign from Hashem, and the answer to his prayer is, not in your lifetime. We've seen previously also the pasuk about uh, you know that uh, if I would be slashed open, that no blood would come out. He'd been ashamed publicly so many times, every time he gave a shear that a student in the back of the room, the Gemara, we learned a couple of times, now raises his hand, excuse me, Rabbi, I know we're learning Masachas, whatever, but what's the punishment for murder and adultery? Someone commits murder, what is there, what's the punishment in the Torah? You know, asking sort of innocently to, to stick it to him. To the end of David Malcolm Shicha's life, that cloud is still hanging over him. And to show you that the Pasuk, we learned about the six months, is related to that's like the summary Pasuk, and Davka in that section, in, and I lost my Malachim Aleph, Malachim Aleph, Perak Bet, uh, Pasuk, uh, Pasuk, whatever that was, Yud Aleph, uh, Yud Bet, we find that what? Davka, the, 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 the declaration is, the two psukim you need to know are, number one, verse 11, here's how long he reigned, and verse 12, Shlomo sat on his throne, and Vatikon Malchuto Me'od, his kingdom was very strongly established. And I ask you to consider whose kingdom was strongly established, literally, Shlomo, but not only. This was the establishment of the Malchut Beit David, the succession, but the Malchut Beit David's succession was not that the son of David, but which son of David and which wife of David's son. And so that's the idea. Now against that backdrop, we're gonna see the next section in a minute, but one, one, one more piece, and that's the Kedushat Levi. Kedushat Levi, Rebbe Yitzchik Berdichever. I was over to dance at his uh, at his kever uh, a few years ago, uh, which I don't usually do, but we happen to be there, and that's what you do when you're at the kever of the uh, of the Kedusha Levi. The Rebbe Yitzchik Ben Sara Sasha Zchuti Agen Aleinu. We're davening to Hashem the Zchut of Rebbe Levi Yitzchak that there should be brach in the world. Okay, Kedusha Levi writes, and this is not shot. So for those of you whose soul is more attuned to literal understandings and you know, groundedness, you will not find it very often with the Kedushat Levi. And with that caveat, I want you to think a little bit, why would I bother telling you this piece of Hasidus? Why is this so germane to the end of the life of David Malk based on so much that we've seen before? Shnotov shel David Shivim Shana, he lived 70 years, but you should be aware, teaches the Kedushat Levi, that his life was an amalgam of years from people who came before him. Now, this is an idea, if I had more time, I would have put this in, in the source, I should have put it in. The Medrash Rabbah describes that uh, Hashem shows Adam Harish on door, door, vidor, shav, every single generation. And he shows him as a person who's never meant to be born. Everyone should know this Gemara backwards and forwards, I was talking about it uh, we've got a good few times in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And who's in the book? This person named David. And David ben Yishai is never going to be born. And what does Adam Harish say? Who's that? Oh, that's David. He's a very important you know, person. What does what does Adam Rishon say? I give him 70 of my years. Therefore, David Amelach lives 70 years. Adam Rishon lives 930 years. He gave him 70 of his years. And the idea that Adam is Rosh Tevot, Adam, David, Mashiach. It's a nice idea encapsulated within the DNA of Adam Harishon was already the harbinger of the end of days. Yeah, this is all drush, but you understand what's going on. David as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a crucial linchpin figure for Klal Yisrael, but also on an international level, Adam, David, uh, uh, Mashiach, universal level. But look at the Gedusha Levi with me. Mishnotav, the 70 years are an amalgam of the years of the life of Yosef, Yaakov, and Avram. Now, of course, now hopefully starts to, oh, remember all those times we looked up parallels between David and these other people who came before? Uh, particularly we saw in terms of the various struggles and the politics and the prescience, but also the issue of dealing with the Yetzir, that's Yosef. We talked about the way in which David saw himself so many times as, a, uh, uh, as, as Yaakov Avinu, Ayin Sham, Tehillim, Kuf Lamed Bet 132, and many other places where there are so many parallels in their life uh, and in their struggles and their issues as well and their covenantal role. And even of Avram, remember last week, we saw that that Haftorah about succession, father to son, is the same story as the succession from Avram to Yitzchak. How do I know? The Haftorah for Parshat Chayi Sarah is 
chapter two of Sefer Malachim Aleph. The Hainu now explains the, the, the Kedushat Levi. 37 years of Yosef, uh, what he, which is what he was missing as against Yaakov. So here's the math. Yosef lived 110 years. His father lived to be 147. So that's 37 years differential. So the 37 years differential that Yosef could have lived the number of years that his father lived, that was given over so that David could have a life. Literally have a life, not get a life, but to literally be able to have life, okay? From Avram, he got five years as against the five years of Yitzhak. Remember that Avram Avinu lives 175, Yitzhak lives 180 years. What happened to the five years of Avram Avinu? The Medrash has uh, its idea that Hashem takes uh, Avram away from the world uh, five years early, then he should have lived 180 years, a beautiful round number. Why did he lose five years? It wasn't his fault. He shouldn't see what terrible way Esau became. Right. Let me just finish the piece, Larry. Hold, hold the thoughts. I just, I got it. Let me just fill out the idea. So that's five. So I'm thirty-seven plus five. Yeah. We have here twenty-eight years of differential from the one seventy-five of Avram Avinu down to the one forty-seven years of Yaakov Avinu. That's twenty-eight. So when you add Veninza Shnot of Avram Yaakov Shlosha Ushloshim Shana, that's uh, thirty-three years right there. Neged Zemalach Shloshim Shlosha Ushloshim Shana Al Kol Yisrael. For that, David uh, David Amalach reigned over thirty-three for thirty-three years. All right, yeah, twenty-eight plus five. For thirty-three years, did David Amalach rule in Yerushalayim over all the tribes, just like Avraham and Yaakov are patriarchs of all of Klal Yisrael. Certainly, Yaakov, uh, Avraham Avinu. We see there's the winnowing process going on. Keep a Chavon Shemalach Seven Shanim. The other seven years was not over the whole nation, it was only over his tribe. Which were the years truly that David received from the, from the forefathers, the latter 33 years of his life? Those are the ones. The end of his life, so to speak, was propelled forward by the, 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 the legacy of the forefathers. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the more that uh, the Tamari Chachamim get old, not old in chron chronology, become more zikane, become more elders, their minds become more settled. These were the most wise years of, of David. David David Amalek did not truly become the king until he connected himself to the patriarchs. Ki hashanim shekibel me'avram v'yakvim lamed gimel shanim uchaneged zemalach al kol Yisrael lamed gimel shanim. Just a beautiful idea that David Hamelach's life, the years that he had were given to him, borrowed in a way, donated by, uh, by his forebears. Yeah, and it, does this see David Amelach as the continuity on the the legacy that they that they brought to bear? Also, their challenges, also their problems. So, okay, uh, somebody else, a uh, questions. Larry, you were waiting so patiently. I'm sorry. Larry, unmute. I can't hear you. I am nothing. Yeah, okay, nothing, sorry. Uh, it, it's it's totally homiletic. What uh, we just read, totally yeah. homiletic. Yeah, because because implicit in it is but that that with respect to David life and the avot are is a zero sum game and but you have to understand that there's a in other words if you start with the premise that like come on that that's why he lived to be 70 because he, he got he got donations from previous people does anyone get to decide this like like uh Yosef said I'd like to live 147 but Hashem take me now because David's going to be born no no the lo lo but we're, we're not dealing on that on that track. We're not not on that channel. Yeah, we're 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 dealing in the who is David? What's the sum total of his life? David is not a break from the Avrahams of the world who deal with succession issues, with the Yaakovs of the world who are the beginning of a ma major dynasty and who unite all the tribes. And he's not so different than a Yosef who had a lot of ups and downs and who had to use his. Uh, uh, his uh, intellectual acumen and his Ruach HaKodesh to be able to navigate the world around him and Eshet Potiphar Yosef and David mm, and they're both 
you know, and they're not the same person. I don't mean to say that it's not the, it's not that it's a reincarnation and right. a, a, a Gilgul. That's not the idea. It's that Yosef, Yosef is Yosef HaTzadik and David is David HaMelech, right? Now, Yosef HaTzadik is called Yosef HaTzadik because he never fell. He was tempted, but he didn't fall. David is called David HaMelech, not because he reigns over the Jewish people, because ultimately, though he has his moment of failure, massive failure, fear that casts a shadow over the rest of his life, he also becomes the Melech who is sholate on himself through a process of tshuva. But what the Medrash, what, what, what this Medrash effectively also does is that it puts David on the same level yes. as the Avot. Yes. That's very powerful. Very powerful. Which, That's by right. the by, if you want me to go one step further with you, and I won't give you any sources, I'll just tell you, in the world of Hasidus, they really do view the order of things that there is, we just read this on Shavuot, so it's on my mind, something called the Merkava, that God, as it were, has a symbolic imagery of a chariot, that he, right, he has a chariot, so the chariot has wheels, if you will, and that the chariot that has Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov are the chariot, and that the fourth element of the chariot is David Amalekh. The same idea. And then when you open your sitter, your psukit is Zimra, is David HaMelech, building, 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 right? So you get to stand before Shalomit Alif Hashem, where what, who do you mention? And who's the only other person's name? Not Shabbos, weekdays, whose name gets mentioned on, on weekdays, on Shabbos, and on Yantif and on Rosh Chodesh, it's David. Or the Yushpizim. Right, and the Yushpizin is another thing. The Yushpizin, right? Also, continue. Uh, Avram Israel, right? Everyone agrees. The last one is David. You understand? The, 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 there's a, there's a whole structure. There's a whole world going on here, sort of under under the surface of what the the connection is. Um, and Shelley, your question is apt, but I don't want to take us too far off topic. Yosef is not one of the Avot, except when he might be in an intermediate generation between them. Ayin Sham the Pachad Yitzchak has a whole big essay on this subject um, that he is he's the Evan Yisrael he's the Av and the Ben because he has characteristics Yosef of being a child obviously he's one of the tribes but he's also a little more he seems to be he acts as the Bechor he takes care of the family he's the Mashbir he's, right so he gets elevated but he doesn't make it all the way and David Davka does and um, it just the amazing you know uh, uh, idea and it's it's in our sitter right and if you you say you know, again, another day we'll talk about Moshe Rabbeinu, not for now. He's another another channel that's braided in it's on Shabbos, etc. But 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 during the the, the week, it's at Semach David, and it's uh, it's it's on on Shabbos. Matai Timloch B'Tzion, Aidei David Mashiach Tzid Kecha, right? And uh, on Yom Tif, uh, on, on Rosh Chodesh, uh, it mentions Umer Chadash B'Tzion Tachin. Uh, but it, it mentions also it's about David and Kiddush Achor is David Melech Yisrael Chavikayam and Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is with Smichat Karen LeDavid Avdecha and Yom Tif that we just had also about going to Mizbeach and Yerushalayim David it, again and again and again and it, it, David is as it were the the part of the Merkava uh, if you will the chariot again that's imagery literal but yeah he's elevated he's very much elevated Rabbi. Could yeah, I, Helen, go ahead, and then we're going to go to the next one the next more interruption. Uh, maybe that's why Shishibba by Yamim, that he, the word Ba is being used because he's using up beautiful. all of the years that he's borrowed. It's a beautiful and idea. The Ba by Yamim, and, though, I thought was more, I thought you were going to something else, which is it says Avram Zuck and Ba by Yamim. It, here it doesn't say Baba Yamin with regard to David. It says Vayam Shemalach David, and at the beginning of the chapter, I don't. It says Vayikaruvu Yemei David Lamut. But it doesn't no, say Baba Yamin. But, but 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 along the lines of what you're saying, that's what it means. The days were coming to an end. David, you could still say David Melch Yisrael Chavikayim in a spiritual sense. He didn't die, like we say about Yaakov Avinu Lomate. David Melch Yisrael Chavikayim. We actually say that based on the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah oh. And here it means his days were dying, but he wasn't dying, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, physically he did die. One more. One more thing, yeah. Rashi says, as Patklario shall Yosef, as Patklario shall Yaakov. And we just uh -huh. had the half to uh -huh. the half to uh, as Patklario shall Yosef, Good. that they had the same countenance. Good. That's what Rashi, what Rashi says about Yaakov and Yosef. Excellent. Thank you. But, Thank you. but what, 
in that respect, we just had the Haftorah of Yechezkel about the Malachim having different faces. So you might say that this different faces is all the way going down to David via Asklaklaria Shel Yaakov and Yosef. It's kind of far out, but uh, bringing you with, with us, uh, Yechezkel brings us. <laughs> yeah, okay, look, uh, in Hachinami, right, many parallels, the life of Yaakov, the life, life of Yosef, and and the life of David as well. Thank you, Rabbi. I'm sorry oh, for okay, interrupting. Wait, someone else I think wants to speak. I think Shoshi, but you're muted, so just click the, yeah. Sorry. Uh, quick question. I'm just wondering why Sanhedrin, what's their, the logic of uh, Tsaraz? Usually Tsaraz is directly related to Lashon Hara. So what's the Kesher here? Not, 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 not only. You not look this only. up in the Gemara, the Gemara says there are different sins that could cause Tsarat. And one of them is actually immorality, huh. sexual immorality, to say okay. it plain. But, you know, how should I say? The Chavetz Chaim Heritage Foundation, you know, they, they focus on Lashon Hara and the Drush is in shul where you have everybody together, including kids and this and that. You're not going to start, you know, uh, but, but that, that, that's part of it as well. Okay. And that's, and that's, that's what he gets. And, and sad to say, you know, uh, the, the, the Sanhedrin was poorish from him because as great as he was, they were also saying, you know, why is this happening to him? You know, if he's really so great, uh, there's a sign from Hashem that maybe he's not really, yeah. In other words, the account of David HaMelech doesn't even close when he dies. It's still gonna keep going. And it's and that's the that's the next section. That's page 404 in the Koran Tanakh. That's the next section, is that Adoniel ben Chagit didn't get the memo. And so he's still figuring out you know, wait, Larry, you have your hand up still, or that's from left over? Okay. It's left over, sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, sorry, I just want to ignore you. Pasuk Yud Gimel, see the next, the next section. Vayavo Adoniyahu ben Chagit el bat sheva eim shlomo, batomar shalom bo echa, vayomer shalom. So he comes to see her, and he asks, she asks, are you coming in peace? Because it's not clear if he's if he's coming in peace or not. Now, you only ask that if you're not sure, because maybe he's coming to be threatening. No, he comes in peace. Vayomer, davar li elayich vatomer daber. Can I ask you something? Vayomer at yadat ki li hayta hamlucha va'alai samu chol Yisrael p'nehem limloch v'atisov hamlucha v'ati la'achi ki mehashem hayta lo. I mean, mind-boggling. You know, says Adoniah to the mother of the king, that I was really the king. And the whole Jewish people chose me. And they turned towards me. But uh, it was turned in another direction. And now it went to my brother. Because that's from Hashem. So Adoniah actually comes to the mother of the king to tell her, you know, I, I just want to, just to clear the air between us, I'm really deserving to be the king, your son is not, but what can we do? Hashem seems to be trying to override the people. Now, we learned at the beginning of the of the Sefer that, um, I think it was like part two or part three of chapter one, about the need for the nation to ratify whoever's going to be the king, and uh, that the Esfali Shivim Ish idea and now he says, So now I'm going to ask you for one thing. Please, I want to ask you, don't turn me away empty-handed. Don't turn, you know, my face away. Don't, don't, don't say no. And she says, okay, speak. She didn't commit she's going to accept, but speak. I mean, this is staggering. Can you just ask Shlomo Melch, please, that he not refuse your request? And your request should be to get Abishag Shunamit. Um, uh, she's available now because David has passed away. Vatomer Batsheva Tov, Anochi Adaber Alecha El Hamelach. Okay, I'll go tell the king what you what you're requesting. Right? Uh, okay. So, so, so you have it, right? I mean, the audacity of the whole thing. Yeah, you're gonna go in. You're gonna tell the king, "Oh, ah, uh, 
uh, yeah, you wouldn't believe who came to see me. He'd like to have use of Avishaga Shunamit. I mean, Is she warning him? I mean, you, you could say, well, I, you, you'd think that she would say, no way. But in a sense, she's not promising him to back his um, request, his but she is promising to bring his, his word forward to Shlomo. But th that would be in a sense to so that Shlomo should know that this guy is still uh, a potential trouble spot. What's, what's going on here? He's not, uh, he hasn't mm -hmm. gone home and, uh, you know, yep. put on Facebook that you should be the king and I'm really happy that he's the king. Yep. Sorry what yep. I did. On the face of it, though, don't you think this is absolute folly? It's well, folly. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's hard to believe he's doing this because I know, I know that this commentator has said she's so beautiful, he's in love with her. But yeah. no, it's got to have to do with, with getting the succession because she's somewhat, she was with David at the last, even if right. he didn't actually have uh, relations with right. her. So it right. has something to do with the succession. Right. Right. Pasukid Tet. Oh, by the way, why does he go to Batsheva? Why doesn't he just, why didn't he just go in to talk to Shlomo? Why would it be in, why would it be in Batsheva's interest for Abishaga Shunamit to be maybe with Adonia? Because she wouldn't want him to, the king is, the new king gets to take over the old king's wives in a sense. Right. And so, um, if she's got to be upset that at the end of, of, of David's life and the end of her marriage, she's so far shunted that this person is brought in to be the companion to David. And so I might not have said it exactly that way, but Shelley, good that you said it. Mm -hmm. That might have been the calculus of what you know, because otherwise, why don't you just go in to talk to Shlomo? Hey, brother, can you help me? You know that that woman from, from David, you, come on. But if if part of the dynamic is that she, uh, Batsheva, waltzed into the room and is trying to talk to David and Avishag is there, it's like, right? Um, and, 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 but it, otherwise it's just, it's folly. Well, what is Adonio thinking? What if, is he thinking? If, if David did have relations with her, Yes. Wouldn't yes. she be a sura as a riot? Exactly. And that would be another sign. If he didn't have relations with her, as the Navi itself testifies, then technically speaking, she is not forbidden to be with somebody else who is not the king. And the greatest signal of that being true would be if she actually was then married off, shall we say, euphemistically, to someone who is not the king. But she would be Muterad also to Shlomo. Yeah. And, and, I, mean, and I, I don't I don't mean to be crude or, or mercenary, but she would be ladies, women don't get upset as the property uh, to which Shlomo would succeed. I mean that's not maybe again not the way I would phrase it, but the idea that she belongs to the kingdom, so to speak, that that is how it worked in antiquity. That's a reality. Whether we like it or not, and the reality was that women were treated to a certain extent. The whole socioeconomic structure was treated as chattels. Right, not in Judaism generally, by the way, but in the royals, in the royals, yes. But but that's another discussion, not for today. It's taking right. it too far afield, and I'm watching the clock. I got. I got a hard stop at 10:30 because I got I got calls about the situation going on now, so still I'll trying stop. to work some things out. But no, but but the point is very well taken. And here's the thing: when Batshava goes into Shlomo and, pre and presents it to him, you know, you just your eyes go wide. Like, what is the folly of this man? And she knows, pasuk pasuk um, uh, 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 pasuk uh, uh, yud uh, yud tet. Actually, before we do pasuk yud tet, flip with me to the book of Esther. The book of Esther. Chapter six in the book of Esther. It's page 891 in the Koran Tanakh. I'm using another Tanakh. It's Esther chapter six, verse uh, seven. Vayomer Hamanel Hamelach, Ishisha Melacha fates be Karo, Yavu Lavuch Malchut, Shalavash Bohamelach, Vesus Sharachavala Melach, Vasherni Tanketer Malchut Birosho, 
The, what should be brought for the man who is uh, finds favor in the king's eyes? The royal raiments, uh, the horse, and the crown. Pasuktat. And the Laton Halavush, Vasus, Al Yad Ish, Misari Amelacha Partamim, Vilbishu, Ed Aish, Asher Amelacha Vitz Bikaro, Vikurla Sus Birchova Ir, Vikurla Fun of Kacha, Yasela Ish, Asher Amelacha Vitz Bikaro, and uh, take the horse, it uh, takes the, the, the raiments and the horse, and they uh, should be put uh, onto this man, and they'll ride him on the horse, and they'll call before him, Kacha Yasela Ish. And what doesn't get mentioned the second pasuk right after, what is not mentioned, by Yomer Abelach, Laaman, Maher Kacha, the Levush, but Asus, take the clothing. Take the horse, Kashuri Barta, as you said one pasuk ago. But as many of the Mefarshim point out, what did Haraman not say in the second pasuk of his two pasuk speech, and what did Achashverosh therefore drop from the from his own repetition and sort of uh, 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 acceptance? The word crown is missing. That's not accidental. The fact that Haman said give the crown. No. And some of them are far I don't remember now who it is. Maybe it was Malden. You know, why did he drop it the second go around? You could say, no, it meant the clothing generally, so that therefore in the next Pasuk, in Pasuk number seven, uh, number uh, eight, excuse, uh, no, I made a mistake twice, number nine, it makes sense that it just said the clothing, which includes a crown. Yeah, but why did you single it out a Pasuk earlier? Now you didn't single it out again. And then when the king repeats it, he also leaves out the word crown. Answer, because that was a step too far. And some believe that it was actually part of the, the slip of, of, of Haman that was giving the king reasons to believe he had designs on the kingdom. As he says, the person should be honest, should wear the crown, blood, can they cough? That's too far. And the idea back here, what's now back to page 404, what's, what's uh, Adonia saying to, uh, to Abacheva? Um, your son does have a Shem on his side, and that's very important, but I really have the people. So give me something. Give me something so that I could save face. So even though Hashem has decided and I accept, it's an act of God that your son is the king. I've done my tzidu kadin. But really the people are with me. So at least if you say that Avishag Shunamit really was never with David and that uh, she really is, uh, you know, uh, 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 available, so that would be a good sign. Also, then she's uh, not reminding you of the dynamic, perhaps, or lack of dynamic between you, if there was one, right? If there was one. I hope I'm not imputing too many modern ideas about jealousies uh, into the story. I don't, I don't know if that it's necessarily true, but maybe. But here, Pasuk Yotet, verse 19, to speak to him about Adoniyahu, Vayakam HaMelech Likrata, Vayishtachula, Vayeshev, uh, how much power does she wield? He made her a seat to sit next to him, and he bows down to her. He's the king. The king's not supposed to bow for anybody, get up for anybody. But for his mother, he gets up. I'm going to ask you a question. Don't ignore my question. Don't deny me the request. Please ask my mother. And what's the request? Don't worry, I, I'm not going to turn you back. Can you please give Avishag over to Adoniyahu? Clearly it was Shlomo's decision. Who had an in with him? The person who had a seat next to him on the throne. It doesn't say it was under, under him, but it was literally she sat to his right side. She's the queen mother. Yeah. So why don't you just ask for him to become the king? This is Shlomo, right? He, cut, he cuts it down right away. Like, come on, everybody knows why we're here and what this is about. And that's, that's just not going to fly. That's just not going to fly, right? So there you have it. Exactly here, Batsheva reports it to Shlomo, and um, uh, Shlomo right away, you know. Uh, I don't know that we know uh, 100% one way or the other whether Batsheva understood what Adoniyahu was about. It seems patently obvious, I think, to all of us when we read it. 
or if there were other reasons why maybe she did think there was some rationale. Now, I want to show you what the Malbim does with this because he sort of repatriates the folly of, uh, of Adoniyahu to see a little bit more in depth that it wasn't necessarily that ridiculous. How stupid could he be to ask for such a thing? He told the mother of the king, I'm really the king? The Jews want me? The Israelites? He didn't just say, look, I really have, I'm infatuated with Avishag Shunamit. Help me to gratify my uh, desire, and uh, that's all I'm asking. He actually made it political. He actually said, I'm, re I'm really the king. And then, even more strange, <laughs> he just said things that were, he was stabbing her with a, with a, with a sword, and she just said, yeah, okay. And then, at the end, why did it mention Aviatar and, and Yoav? <laughs> if you look, Aviatar and Yoav are also what Shlomo Elf says, that he's so upset, right? So, at yadat ki li haitam lucha. Hotza'a zu ibalat shte panim. There are two facets to what he was saying. Ofen echad, yirek omer, acha sham lucha haita ru'uya li. I'm really supposed to be the king. Imitzad toloti, based on my birth order, shani abachor. I'm the Bechor, now that Amnon is dead, Absalom is dead, etc. And Kilav, we never find out what happens to him. Vazot Amra Amar, Kili Haitam Lucha, who's supposed to be for me by, by the numbers, by the age order. Ve'imitzad, Ratzon Ha'am, Shishkimola, and if you want to say it's for popular acceptance, he said, the Jewish people had turned to me. But, what can you do? It was turned away, went to my brother. It's not in the right place. We all know there was a displacement. What can you do? Um, therefore, I ask for something. I mean, we're, I'm entitled to something. It's an entitlement, at least. And maybe the logic is a little bit, it will solidify the king's rule because it shows I'm still in the good graces of the king and I too have ratified that he's really the king. You cannot deny that I have all the people standing behind me and it's very good. It's amazing. It's wonderful that Hashem is with Shlomo. That's lovely. But I got all the people. And in the world such as it is, that's politics. Yeah? That's, it's, it's an errant thought process, but that, that's, that's how it works. Yeah? So I am, I am royalty. You're not giving yeah, me royalty. But I'm much more than that. Be, yeah. It wouldn't just be politics. It would be Torah that he has to be ratified, that the king has to be ratified. Right, right, correct, 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 correct. Uvo'ofen acher tikein tvarav. He fixed what he said a little bit more. Mas v'siyem, ki ma'asham haitalo. But he admitted, ki ma'asha ain hedjot mishtamish v'shavit ha'shamelech, hu rabbi melech ha'moloch ha'yadeh askamat ha'am. The only time that you're not allowed to take that which belongs to the king, uh, like Larry was saying before, the property of the king or part of the royal retinue, that's when the person rules on the agreement of the nation. Because fundamentally, that type of king is a person like all other people. They're, that person is the trappings of royalty to the nth degree because their whole rulership is that they have to show how they're above everybody else. How do they do it? With the royal trappings, royal raiments, and royal people, etc. And a commoner cannot use anything that belongs to the king. That's how a king who rules by common consent and only common consent needs to show their honor and their supremacy. But if a king rules on his own two feet, so to speak, that he is not placed there by the others, but by himself, so he doesn't need to have all these outside trappings. As the Medrus describes with the Melch Basavadam, we cannot ride on the king's horse and you cannot sit on the throne of, of the king. But the Medrus says, oddly enough, paradoxically, but when it comes to God, 
Rochin al Suso, Yoshin al Kiso. You can sit, sit on God's horse, so to speak, and ride God's chariot. You can sit on God's throne as it teaches in Sefer Tehillim. Me, who ze Melech Hakavod, Hashem Tsevakun Melech Hakavod Sel. God rules alone, right? He is the sole ruler. He's the ultimate king. And paradoxically, the fact that he's so secure means that Hashem is willing to allow someone else, quote unquote, to sit on his throne. By the way, who is that? It's Shlomo HaMelech. Once the honor of Hashem is attached to that individual, and that individual becomes the king of honor, of glory. And it's not because the nation chose him, and it's not because of any ascent. Then even if someone else uses the scepter of the king, euphemistic language, doesn't matter. He doesn't need these trappings that everyone's going to agree to because God said, and that's all that matters. He got divine ratification. And that's what it means. Ultimately, who is the king? The king is Hashem. Does not need the people, right? I should underline this too, to make it complete. Yeah. Do you want to show how powerful the uh, the election and the choosing of of Shlomo Melech is? That really, it's all from Hashem. You know, we'll ratify it more than anything else. Doniyot says to Batsheva, let me use something that is really for royals only because a king who is so secure doesn't care about those things. Who should be insecure if Hashem himself has crowned them? You know, and I know that every newspaper a day ago announced that I, Adoniel ben Chagit, the son of Chagit and David, was the real king. But now someone else is. And only one thing could overturn the will of the people. That's the will of Hashem. So since you know that's true, and I know that's true, why don't you make it make it official? Give me a, give me a, 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 a Abishag Shunamit. And what happens when she gets to um, to, to Shlomo? No way, right? So the bear law Adonio called Dibushach of Milat Lo Perish Bishvilo. The bear law means for him uh, with regard to or for his sake. But Sheva Chashva Kize Yel Tovat Shlomo Gam came according to the Malbin. She thought it was a good idea. She was going to speak to David, to Shlomo, for Shlomo's benefit regarding Adoniyahu. Right? That's what David, what Shlomo says back. Right? She she explained. That's why it says he is my elder brother. Right? So ask for him to be the king. Don't ask for Abishag. If you're going to pull the idea that really he's somehow worthy and you're also buying the narrative, so give him the kingdom. And account of the fact that you say that all the Jews are following, all the Israelites follow him. That's because he also has the high priest, former, and he has the chief of staff. That's why. So therefore, Avishag's not going to be good enough for that for him either. Yeah, so he says, no, he pushes the point. You know, really, he is my older brother. Really, he does have the, the trappings. Really, he is going to take the king. So why don't you ask that? Instead, giving him Avishag is not going to quell it. It's only going to stoke the fuel more that really, even you, uh, et tu, mama, you know, you also uh, went in with this. He can't accept. Pasuk Chav Gimel in the Navi. That's why it has to be a divine. Uh, 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 oath. Really, this he took his life in his hands. He kills him. Done. Uh, and then the next two stories we won't have time for today: the story of Eviatar and the story of Yoav. Which happens next, right? So he, the the Malbim 
uh, tells us by Shiva Hamelach, right? Kibanash Diber, Hello, Diber Ratzaloma, Hello Diber, Hello Dover Zet, Diber Msirut Nasho, Kib Vadaya Vinshesh Lo Sakana, Bishe Elazot. He knew, he knew the risks, he went in anyway. We shvil nisue avishag le moser nafsho ki im imlo beshechoshev tach bulot, shebezei shishtamesh bisharit shamelach, yuchalim rod. Shlomo saw right through it. He said, This is just a ploy. And therefore, he gives the, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the oath, right? Uh, the promise is that I'm going to be a person of, of, uh, of tranquility. I am compelled to get rid of any possible rebel. I cannot allow for this. I have to quell it immediately. And in fact, that is what he does. Now, um, uh, we're, we're a little bit out of time. Shelly, you asked a good question. No trial for Mori Bamalchut. That's the rule. That does not require any kind of a trial. It's not a judicial killing. It is extrajudicial. It's from the executive branch, so to speak. And the king, that's one of his roles. He has the power of life and death. We have one minute left. If we had time to look up Diver Hayamim, you could see a Pasuk there, which is a very cryptic Pasuk. It's about root, uh, and it's just a nice way to close for today. Okay, we do have to look it up. Chronicles 1, chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 20, uh, 23. Chronicles 1, chapter 4, verse 23. is a strange name given to uh, these people. Uh, B'nai Shimon, I know, where am I? Chapter 4, verse 23. Yeah, it just gives you this strange uh, name. Hema Yotzrim Yosvi in the time who gedarim a melech and melech to Yashvu. Sham tells you about these people um, and um, that they that they, what they did. They were they were they were working in low low um, uh, um, low uh, uh, work. Let's say now. There's questions here, and I, I can't go into all of them, but it, it mentions here, verse 22, about two people called Yoash and Saraf, uh, who uh, uh, married into Moab. So it's mentioned here. And it mentions the Yashuvi Lachem, Vadvar Matikim, and there's an old story there, but it doesn't say much about it. Forget the Koran Tanakh translation, because it goes in a totally different direction than the Gemara, and Bavabach, which identifies these two people as Machlon and Kilion. Uh, and wants to read this as related somewhat to the story of Root. Uh, but it's, it doesn't exactly add up from a shot perspective. This is from Shayla and uh, whatever. It's something related to um, the world of um, the world of um, of Yehuda, Yehuda and Shimon intermingled. Anyway, but this is the part that we need for, for our purposes today. Um, when it mentions Asher Ba'alula Moav Shinasu Nashim Moaviyot, V'yashuvi Lachem, it refers to root. Sheshavish Nibika Bebeit Lachem Yehuda. It's a homiletic. It's not actually what the words mean, but um, so V'advarm Atikim, Dvarm Halalu Atik Yomaya Amaran. These matters were already spoken by the ancient one of days, meaning Hashem. And where does it come from? So the Pasuk Matzati David Avi, I found David, my servant, and in the story of Moab and Ammon being born by the daughters of Lot, Shtev Notecha Hanimtsaot. Okay, but here's what we need. Diver Hayamim, Hema Hayotzrim Viyoshve Nitaim Ugedera Im Hamelach Bimalach to Yashvusham. Hema Yotzrim Elu Bene Yonada Ben Rechav Shinatsu Swat Abihan, another story for another time. Yoshim in the time says Shlomo Shidomanatiat Minatia Bamalchuto. He was considered like one who was planted in his kingdom. Uh, 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 and the idea here of Ugideira Zu Sanhedrin, Shigirdu Gidru, Pirzotin Shal Yisrael, Im Hamelach Bamalach to Yashu Sham, with the king in his work, did they sit there with him? Zuruta Moavia. Sherata uh, b'malchut Shlomo ben Beno Shel ben Bena. It's uh, Ruth who saw the kingdom of her great 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 grandson, right? The grandson of her grandson, as it says. But Yosin kisei le'em hamelach. There was a chair next to the king for the mother of the king. Who's that? Amar of Lazar le'ima shel malchut. The mother of the king. Who was that? Homiletically, the Gemara wants to tell us. It's Rut Hamoavia. Batsheva was sitting not in the chair of, of Batsheva, but actually the chair of Rut Hamoavia. 
just a beautiful imagery. Again, I, I don't think it's the Pshat. When you look at the Pshat of the Navi, there was a seat for the Aim HaMelech. But the Gemara wants you to see the pattern that came from Ruda Moaviyah and the crucial role that these women played. Interesting contrast, total contrast to what's going on with Abishag Shunamit. Batsheva is the one who takes the initiative and goes into Natan and Avi and then goes into Shlomo. And Batsheva is the, re, the receiver of Adoniyah's missive. And she comes and she has a seat next to the king. The king bows to her. Yeah. But the idea that this was like, this was the seat for the, for the, uh, for the mother, but also for the Bubby, the Bubby of the Bubby, uh, to be able to be in that place from the father's side, from David's side. To, she had a seat because the whole thing stemmed from uh, her, which comes full circle. I'll end with this. The idea that the chair that's next to Shlomo is a chair, whether it's actual or symbolic or both, that ratifies the idea that the king, the kingdom of David HaMelech stems from Rut HaMoaviyah, which was contested, and this was a ratification of it. And the ratification of Malchut Beit David through David, through Batsheva, that Batsheva has that seat. And so I could see on two channels, the level of shot, it is Batsheva, but if you will, the plaque on the chair in the back is, this is the chair for the mother of our kingdom, Ruta Moavia. It's inter interchanging both. On the Pshat level, it's Batsheva. On the Midrashic level, it's the grandmother of the grandmother already. It's uh, Ruth uh, Moavia, the Gior Tzedek, from whom uh, David Malka Mashiach is born. Okay, that's all we have time for today, believe it or not. Hope you enjoyed the shir. We'll get together, God willing, next week. We'll see what happens to Abiyatar, what happens to Yoah, what happens to all the other people in Parag Bet. Not going to be pretty, but we'll see how it happens. And uh, looking forward to learning together at that time. Have a great day, everybody. Kol Tuv. Are you?